from Seattle, Washington, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube on the ground at OpenStack Day Seattle 2015. Now, here's your host, John Furrier. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Seattle. This is the Cube on the Ground Conversations. I'm John Furrier with the Cube. Our next guest is Sabu Alamadru. Welcome to the Cube Conversations on the Ground in Seattle. Thank you. Good to be here. Uh, you work at eBay, uh, Chief Architect, Chief Cloud. What's your title? Uh, Chief Engineer, Cloud and Platforms. You're the guy giving yeah. the keynotes. OpenStack here is having an innovation day and really highlighting the Seattle ecosystem of, of engineers. Big geek culture in Seattle. Um, OpenStack obviously on the cutting edge, certainly in the backyard of Amazon and Microsoft, so a lot of big whales here in the cloud business. Um, what is the vibe here? What's going on here at this meetup, this big event, this innovation day? I think, I think there, is, uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, enthusiasm and, and energy in, in getting OpenStack succeed, and I see a lot of folks talking about uh, what has happened in the past, how, how, to, how happen OpenStack has evolved, and how new kinds of workloads with Kubernetes containers are coming onto the cloud. And this is really exciting. And uh, in particular at eBay, we are thinking of it end to end experience from bare metal all the way to how apps get written and deployed across our data centers. I think we are able to merge all these technologies and create a, a cohesive stack uh, that runs 24 by 7 millions of users across the globe. So it always seems to have a conversation, certainly in the mainstream press or you know bloggers that aren't in the cloud business. Oh, OpenStack's not going to make it, and OpenStack is dead. It's, there's always something is dead. You can't have a headline without saying it's dead. But OpenStack has been resilient as a community. Every single time that conversation happens, new stability comes in. The ball gets moved down the field. Share with the folks, and we've seen some some consolidation last year. We'll be in Silicon Valley next yeah. week, and some of the people that were there last year aren't here this year, but the progress continues. So share with the folks out there, what is the progress? Because OpenStack continues to get global global adoption, the developer communities, the operators, and you're one of the leaders. What is the, what's happening in OpenStack? So, so here's the thing. OpenStack is a big distributed system, and infrastructure by traditionally is hard. It's inflexible, it, it breaks, it's not malleable like, like you know, software is. So OpenStack is, is what is giving us that layer of uh, flexibility to make infrastructure, you know, manage that at, at large scale. And folks that have uh, treated OpenStack as a large distributed system and engineered, uh, put operations around it, have succeeded with OpenStack. Like we have probably one of the largest OpenStack clouds, uh, both P -P -P uh, eBay and prior to the split, PayPal. Uh, and we took it as an engineering problem from around 2012 and, and really worked hard for three years to actually to bring it to where it is. Today we are running you know, uh, a fair number of availability zones, uh, over 10,000 hypervisors, uh, production workloads running, dev workloads running, CIs, every workload that is coming on is running on OpenStack. So we have treated it as a, as a large system, as a distributed system. And we put the effort into it, and that made it made it work for us. How much production and non-production is on your workloads right uh, now? Uh, we, we, I don't I can't share the exact numbers as of today, but over twenty percent of production of eBay.com is running on OpenStack, and that number is growing. And because as we migrate workloads, either we create new workloads, as our migrate existing workloads. That's significant, and, and so I want to drill on that because we you know we <laughs> do the cube at a lot of events, mm -hmm. and one of the things we always come up is the conversation around DevOps, and there's a little mystique around DevOps. It's not just software, as you said, it's an engineering conversation. So I want you to share with the folks out there, specifically the kinds of engineering that worked well for you guys at eBay, and things that didn't go well, yeah. and what approaches did you take, and how did you attack those problems, and how did you ultimately arrive at such a great sure. production environment? When we started OpenStack in 2012, uh, we were not really sure uh, what it takes to run OpenStack at scale. Prior to that uh, journey, we were we invested significantly in automating a data center. We had a full layer of uh, bare metal provisioning, tens of thousands of uh, bare metal across across different data centers. We have invested in that, so we knew what it would take to uh, to do that kind of automation, to provision racks in minutes, and we did that before even started OpenStack. So we knew sort of you know we're going to get there, but we were not really sure what the journey is going to look like. And so we invested heavily from uh, in 2012, 13, even 14 uh, in automation. A lot of automation. All of our engineers who are actually great programmers, they ended up spending a lot of time in figuring out how to automate OpenStack deployment. These, these were engineers, these were not operators. 
And they spend time, uh, how do you monitor network? We had one of the largest SDN deployments on OpenStack uh, in the world. And we worked on that. We, we got a ton of insights into how to scale it up. It was awesome. Of course, there were uh, pain points along the way because we were learning what it takes. Every, every, every upgrade was a lesson, how to do it better, how to do it better next time. So it was never uh, uh, like a, it was never consistent or, or like, you know, hey, we are cool for now. Well, you're early adopters. You, your eyes were wide open. You kind of knew that coming in that there might be some trouble spots and you yeah. had an engineering team. Yeah. But how did, for folks that are doing it now, it's gotten a lot better with OpenStack. There's some smoother deployments. There's still some engineering involved. Again, engineering, not just software. What's the advice for folks out there now in the enterprise who have an on-prem? Might not be the scale of eBay. I mean, eBay is huge. I mean, you got a huge bare metal. But you know, a lot of people have on-prem data centers. What, what should they be doing? I think uh, my advice is very simple. Uh, treat it like a sof software problem. Don't treat it as like an IT problem. It's not an IT, so IT problem. It's a software problem. You have to invest engineering into it, into how do you manage it, how do you man make self-service work, how do you monitor, how do you upgrade. All these things, you need to take it as a as, a, as an engineering organization, not as an IT organization. That's a great quote. You <laughs> treat it as a software problem, not an yeah. IT problem. I love yeah. that. So, so let's take the next step. Is IT? What does IT do now? I they don't just know. run I services. I, I really don't know. IT becomes software. Everything is software. So, as a software developer, break down what it, what is a good cloud software guy. Is it a DevOps? What is DevOps? Is it cloud ops? As DevOps evolves to go mainstream, which it is. How should companies embrace DevOps, and what kind of software environment should there be? I think I think uh, we adopted DevOps culture quite heavily uh, in the last three years, mainly to for us to learn how to deal with infrastructure, and that taught us a number of lessons. One of the lessons is that uh, you need you need uh, automation, you need complete pl automated platforms. It's not just DevOps; you have to think beyond that, like like with Kubernetes, containers, Mesos. These things are giving you the better abstractions, so that you don't have to worry about investing in DevOps, but you want to take the next leap into, into uh, better apps, uh, durable uh, uh, abstractions that actually are more resilient to failure. What is the key thing in OpenStack in your mind right now? Looking at what's happening globally, obviously they were just in Taipei, you got Tokyo right around the corner. We'll be in Silicon Valley next week with theCUBE for OpenStack SV. What is the current thing on the table that everyone's talking about and working on on OpenStack to make it move uh, faster? I think I think it is. Um, to me, it's uh, it's a stability. Uh, keep it keep it stable. Carefully add features. Uh, make sure it, the ship is not shaky. No leaks in the boat. No leaks in the <laughs> boat. Not shaky. Innovate slowly. So talk about eBay. What is the biggest surprise you've had looking back now and saying, you know, inside the organization, not the not the folks who are engineering it, outside of your group. What has been a surprise that you've seen come from your work? I think I think it's uh, agility. I think we we took a very self service self service approach from the beginning. Uh, we put out our APIs in front of developers, and we let them go wild with it. We put some constraints on what they can and they cannot do, but that like what what kind of constraints? Like security network okay. uh, at the basics of the perimeter and that let a uh, lot of developers do things that we couldn't be doing. We wouldn't be doing ourselves. So they were being creative, they were tinkering being creative, around. They were, they were like before we knew uh, they were. There were teams running, you know, thousands of VMs with Docker and, and CIs, without even asking us that that hey they want to do it. They went and did Ask it. Ask for forgiveness. That's, that's <laughs> basically that's <laughs> basically the approach, the culture we want to have. And you want that culture. Absolutely. Yeah, experiment, try Absolutely. things. Absolutely. Ask for forgiveness, not permission. Not permission, exactly. <laughs> okay, so get, final question: What's the vibe here in Seattle? Obviously, the the Seattle Innovation Day, the OpenStack Innovation Day here. The cube is on the ground. A lot of stuff happening in that room next to us. What's the vibe overall in Seattle in the developer community? I think this week it's all about containers, man. It's all about containers. How do they play with uh, every company? Is figuring out what it means to uh, to integrate and come with a cohesive answer. Some people are getting it right. Some are still thinking. I think that's the vibe I got from this week. What is the takeaway on getting it right? What's the where's the rubber hitting the road? Uh, <laughs> I think I think there's a lot of talk uh, this week. Uh, interesting, but I don't think many companies have figured out the right answers yet. Okay, well, we, we'll be looking for those answers. We're on the ground here in Seattle. This is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching. We are here at the OpenStack Innovation Day here in Seattle, Washington. This is theCUBE on the ground. Thanks for watching. Thanks, John.